Hello, welcome to Living Life. My name is David. It's a pleasure having you guys uh, join us today to share the Word of God together. Uh, one of my favorite movies to watch is superhero movies. Uh, I love watching Batman, Superman, all the new Marvel superhero movies. And I think that one of the reasons why I enjoy watching these movies is because there is an overwhelming sense of justice served at the end. The plot of the movie is simple. There is uh, this bad guy who is uh, just terrorizing everyone, going around, doing evil things, and the superhero comes victorious at the end and justice is served. And I think that's uh, one of the reasons why people enjoy watching these movies is because at the end, justice is served. There is this knight in shining armor that comes uh, for the people and uh, they save the people and the evil guy is destroyed and everyone loves watching that. In today's uh, text, we see a similar thing happening. Uh, everywhere people look, there is this uh, evil, there's darkness, but at the end, God puts on the armor of God himself and justice is served. So let's get into the word today. Isaiah chapter 59, verses 9 through 21. So justice is far from us, the righteousness does not reach us. We look for light, but all is darkness, for brightness, but we walk in deep shadows. Like the blind, we grope along the wall, feeling our way like men without eyes. At midday, we stumble as if it were twilight. Among the strong, we are like the dead. We all growl like bears, we moan mournfully like doves. We look for justice, but find none, for deliverance, but it is far away. For our offenses are many in your sight, and our sins testify against us. Our offenses are ever with us, and we acknowledge our iniquities. Rebellion and treachery against the Lord, turning our backs on our God, fomenting oppression and revolt, uttering lies our hearts have conceived. So justice is driven back and righteousness stands at a distance. Truth has stumbled in the streets. Honesty cannot enter. Truth is nowhere to be found, and whoever shuns evil becomes a prey. The Lord looked and was displeased that there was no justice. He saw that there was no one. He was appalled that there was no one to intervene. So his own arm worked salvation for him, and his own righteousness sustained him. He put on righteousness as his breastplate, and the helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance, and wrapped himself in zeal as in a cloak. According to what they have done, so will he repay wrath to his enemies, and retribution to his foes. He will repay the islands their due. From the west, men will fear the name of the Lord, and from the rising of the sun, they will revere his glory. For he will come like a pent-up flood that the breath of the Lord drives along. The Redeemer will come to Zion, to those in Jacob who repent of their sins, declares the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit who is on you and my words that I have put in your mouth will not depart from your mouth or from the mouths of your children or from the mouths of their descendants from this time on and forever, says the Lord. So I want to start off by reading verse 9 to you guys again. It says, So justice is far from us, and righteousness does not reach us. We look for light, but all is darkness. For brightness, but we walk in deep shadows. Um, darkness is simply the absence of light. Um, if there is no good, evil persists. And this was the atmosphere or the climate during Israel during that time that there was not a single righteous person. Uh, evil was just uh, rampant, and justice was nowhere to be found. And if we continue along the way, uh, verse 14 and 15, it says, So justice is driven back, and righteousness stands at a distance. Truth has stumbled in the streets. Honesty cannot enter. 
Truth is nowhere to be found, and whoever shuns evil becomes a prey. Their Lord looked and was displeased that there was no justice. So it was this weird uh, society that they're living in where if you're evil, it was considered a social norm. And if you're righteous and if you were a good person, it was considered something very unusual. And the Lord looked around looking for someone to kind of step up, looking for that one righteous person to bring the justice of God, but there was not a single person. So when this happens, God, He takes matters into His own hands. He says, enough is enough. And God has this cup of wrath. And once it becomes filled, once it overflows, God tends to uh, take matters into His own hands. And in verse 16, it says, He saw that there was no one. He was appalled that there was no one to intervene. So His own arm achieved salvation for Him. And His own righteousness sustained Him. So God, again, um, our God is a God of justice, and He says, enough is enough. Um, I'm tired of seeing my people living in misery, living in just total evil and uh, lack of justice and righteousness, and with His own arm, He takes matters into His own hands. And verse 17, it says, He put on righteousness as His breastplate and the helmet of salvation on His head. He put on the garments of vengeance and wrapped Himself in zeal as in a cloak. Uh, this is where Paul gets the armor of God in Ephesians chapter 6, and he tells, uh, or he encourages us to put on the full armor of God, and this is probably where he gets it, in Isaiah chapter 59. And if you could kind of imagine a superhero, or Batman or Superman, putting on his cape, or putting on uh, whatever garments necessary to fight evil, that's what God does, and he says that he put on righteousness as his breastplate, the helmet of salvation on his head, and he put on the garments of vengeance, because our God is a God of justice, and he wrapped himself in zeal as in a cloak, and he brings justice upon Israel. And I think it's an awesome imagery. And um, again, the reason why people love superhero movies is because at the end, justice prevails and good overcomes evil. And verse 18, it says, According to what they have done, so will he repay wrath to his enemies and retribution to his foes. He will repay the islands their due. Verse 19 says, From the west, people will fear the name of the Lord, and from the rising of the sun, they will revere his glory. For he will come like a pent-up flood that the breath of the Lord drives along. So again, it's like this raging water that's been pent up, stored up, uh, like a dam um, uh, stopping this flow of water. And once that dam is Release. There's this gushing of water and this justice flows on like a river. And we get this awesome imagery of God just taking complete and total control of the situation. And one thing that we um, receive from this, uh, one of the applications is sometimes we feel that everywhere we look, evil is rampant. Uh, in society, in governments, uh, all over the world, we feel like God isn't present. We feel like all these evil people are, uh, they, they become more prosperous. Uh, everywhere we look, we see just people in high places. Uh, they're just completely and totally evil. But one thing that we know is that in God's time, not in our time, not when we think that it's time for justice and righteousness to come, but when God sees fit, He will bring His justice and righteousness upon people. And in verse 21, uh, there's this awesome reminder again. And God concludes this chapter by saying, As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit who is on you will not depart from you. And my words that I have put in your mouth will always be on your lips, on the lips of your children and on the lips of their descendants from this time on and forever, says the Lord. And God promises us that his spirit will be not only with us, but with our children and the future generations as well. And this is the amazing grace of God, and this is the awesome promise that God gives to the people of Israel. Let us go into time of prayer. As we wrap up chapter 59, uh, we're able to see this imagery of evil being everywhere we look. There was not a single 
righteous person. The justice of God wasn't being served anywhere. And what happens was God looked around so that there was no uh, righteousness or no justice, and he was very displeased. And as a result, he takes matters into his own hands, and with his strong arm, he puts on the armor of God, uh, the helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, and he brings justice upon himself. And it's an amazing thing to see that God in his time, not when we see fit, not when we think that, oh, at this time I feel like justice should be served. Uh, no, but when God sees fit, when God finally feels that his cup of wrath is uh, filled to the brim and justice comes raging on like a river. And we get this overwhelming sense of peace that God is in control of all things. In, in all, at all times, in all situations, God is in control and his justice will always be served at the end. Let us go into time of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for the word that you have given us today. I pray that as we just wrestle with your word, as we cling on to your promises, Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that, that we may know that you're a God of justice, that even though evil seems uh, to be everywhere in this world, that ultimately in your time that you're in control of all situations and all things, let us be reminded uh, to carry out your righteousness, uh, help us put on the armor of God so that we may be uh, just salt and light wherever that, every, wherever that we go. I pray that you help us um, really just uh, put your words into our hearts. I pray that your uh, words may just uh, really bear fruit in our lives and in our ministry today. We thank you, we love you, and in your precious name we pray, amen.